another Papa sticker. So the M2 Mac Mini has been out for a few weeks now and I wanted to take you guys through the experience of using it as someone that's been used to using the M1 Max MacBook Pro for about six months now. Now I actually already shot this entire video and, and it was extremely boring. Now I don't know if it's because I was sick and I need to recover and I was just falling asleep or if the video was just so boring that I fell asleep and I felt like I needed to reshoot the entire thing so here we are. In the back you got the ports, all the ports that you need. You have a port for power, you have a port for ethernet, you have two Thunderbolt 4s and HDMI and two USB-A ports, as well as a headphone jack. Pretty much everything you need, and then you also have the grill for the fan right over here. Now, this is kind of crazy that, you know, they managed to make something this small. And, you know, this is not a new form factor. It's been around for a while, but it still amazes me how they were able to pack so much power into something so small. And if you've ever seen inside of one of these, there's so much extra space, so they could have actually made it even smaller if they wanted to. Now, I have a gaming PC as well. That's a mini ITX build, so it's pretty small. So when I put this up next to it, you can really see how small this thing truly is. One thing that bothers me about this is that when you're looking at it this way, and you turn it around, this Mac mini type is upside down. So like it's almost like they intend you to flip it over like this, and then you can look at it which is kind of weird. So if you haven't upgraded to the M1 from an Intel based Mac mini, this bad boy is 3.5 times faster as like a base model, which is kind of crazy. You know, those speeds are insane. Uh, the M1 alone was crazy. I used the M1 Air for about a year to you know create content on and it was a base model M1 Air. And it worked pretty well. The only issue was that it was throttling a lot and it couldn't sustain long workflows. But since this guy has a fan built into it, I do think that this will be pretty good in terms of performance. 1080p, big chilling. If you're looking at 4K, depending on how your workflow is, your file sizes, you know, all that stuff, a little bit trickier. So setting it up is an absolute breeze. You know, it's just the basics where you need to get some power. Once you're done that, you just need to get yourself a keyboard and a mouse. In my case, I have the full size Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. Touch ID is an absolute game changer. Makes your life a lot easier when you're doing things like popping passwords in. Now that's something I got used to from using a MacBook where Touch ID is built into the actual computer. Now, if you don't wanna go for the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, you can always go for the one without it. This one here is gonna be a little bit cheaper since there is no Touch ID built in. For around hundred bucks, you can pick up the MX Master 3. This is a really good mouse and honestly, it's probably a better pick than the Magic Mouse from Apple. Yes, the Apple Magic Mouse looks good, but you can't use it while it's charging. You know, this is gonna feel a lot better for long work sessions. You also have more buttons to use and customize and you also have a nice little horizontal scroll for things like video editing when you're navigating the timeline. Once you have the keyboard and mouse, all you gotta do is follow the on-screen steps, you know, pop in a password for your Wi-Fi and do a little software update and you're pretty much all good to go. You log into your Apple ID and that's all you need to do for the basic setup. After that, it's just about downloading whatever apps that you need for your workflow. So in my case, all I needed was the Adobe Suite. Now in terms of performance on this, I've edited a couple reels on it and I'm actually editing this video right now. To give you guys a little bit of perspective, now in terms of how this handled working in Premiere Pro, it was able to handle my two streams of 4K footage that was running on a timeline. And in terms of cutting a video, it worked really well, but now we just gotta look at how it performs in an export. So I have the version that's literally never gonna see the light of day on both of the computers, uh, on the M2 mini and on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. I'm gonna run a quick export just so you can compare between the two and see how fast they are. And I'm just gonna use the YouTube 4K preset. Obviously the M1 Max is gonna be way better, but I just wanna see how they compare between the two, considering the price difference. And this is like a real project that I would export. Right away, it's telling me it's gonna take about 10 minutes on the M2 Pro and three minutes on the M1 Max. So that's a pretty big difference in terms of how fast it'll be. And we have the timer going just to uh, benchmark the two. So while we're waiting for this Mac mini to finish exporting, the M1 Pro has been done for about like five minutes now, and this is still chugging away. There's a minute left on the timer. And I just wanted to say like, you know, this thing has taken quite a bit of time to finish the export, but compared to what there was out there, like with the Intel chips, this is pretty fast. So for the M1 Max on the MacBook Pro, it took about four minutes and that's blazing fast. Uh, M2 Pro finally clocked in at 11 minutes and 10 seconds. I think that's more than enough in terms of render speeds. You have a really good speed at that rate. And like, keep in mind, $4,500 MacBook Pro, $600 Mac Mini. Like, it's, it's not really comparing apples to apples. So I'm happy with that speed. And anyone that's looking to 
edit videos should be happy with that as well. So working in Lightroom, perfectly fine. Uh, going through your photos, doing any adjustments, work seamlessly, AI masks, everything. <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, the only thing is exports are a little bit slower than the M1 Max, but it's to be expected. So for most people, this is definitely more than enough. There are a few upgrades that I recommend if you want something just a little bit more powerful. So let's get into that. So you're definitely gonna want to upgrade the SSD because at 256 gigs, you do have the slower SSD because you're only using one of the two slots inside the Mac mini. So going for 512 will solve that problem. And I honestly think that having 16 gigs of RAM is gonna make a huge change over having only eight. At this point, you might as well go for the M2 Pro. Not only do you get better performance, but you don't have to worry about not having enough Thunderbolt 4 ports for things like SD card readers and other SSD drives because you only have 500 gigs of storage on your machine. But if you ignore any kind of upgrades, I do think at the base model, it is more than enough to get started and you know work on your first few videos. I hope this video was helpful and provided some insight on which Mac mini is right for you. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you later. Peace.